So yesterday we had yet another announcement from Team Liquid about them making changes to their CSGO lineup going forward. Surrounding this was the idea that there's probably going to be more announcements coming soon and the fact that there's several rumors floating around. But let's start with the facts. So from the announcement itself, it was stated that Erica Dren Hogue would be released from the team. Now this is his second time being removed from the team, but apparently this removal is going to be a bit more permanent. And also in the announcement, Liquid stated that they have already signed another rifler full-time for Team Liquid, but for whatever reason, he's not going to be able to compete with Liquid right away. And so that means that Simple, who was already under contract from the past with Team Liquid, would be standing in for the team for the ECS Finals as well as at the next Major in Cologne. So let's start picking this all apart and trying to make sense of all of it. So the first reaction that I have to have about the whole situation is what is going on over there they have been playing musical chairs with contracted players for the last few months it seems like it's really been a big mess like they don't really know what they want uh to do going forward hopefully now they're starting to put the pieces of the puzzle together and figure out what they actually want to do going forward but to say the least it has been quite an interesting fiasco with team liquid uh over the past few months i mean i can't even count how many changes that there have been with this lineup uh, over the last six or so months. Uh, I think I, I saw a tweet out there about nine or ten changes going on with the team. Uh, some of them made sense. Some of them seemed kind of weird, like backpedaling. Uh, but they need to get this stuff sorted out soon because Team Liquid really should be one of the top lineups in North American CSGO. And for a long time, they were definitely a top three team in CSGO. They obviously had the big finish at MLG Columbus with the five they put together uh, for that event. Um, you know, but they've also had their troubles, obviously going 0-8 in the first week of E-League was not where they really wanted to be. Uh, this team really should, like I said, be a top three team in the region. They should be finding a way to be competitive internationally. So this is certainly concerning to see them really struggling to put together a proper team, or at least keeping a team together that works together and enjoys playing with each other, or at least enough to be able to stick it out. Um, so this is something to keep in mind going forward, but again, maybe once we figure out who this new rifler is, this new mystery man that's coming in, as well as some of these other rumors get settled, maybe we finally will have the team that we need for Liquid to be strong again and actually be, you know, worth talking about in the international scene. Now, after that initial reaction, I want to take a look at Adren first and talk a little bit about what maybe his future could hold. So, obviously, Adren was already testing the waters with some other teams before he returned to Team Liquid for the second time. Uh, this included trying out for Cloud9, where he might have been the fifth in the in-game leader for Cloud9 before Slimmy was acquired. And in fact, the fact that uh, uh, Dren decided to go back to Liquid, or I don't know what the negotiations were instead of playing with Cloud9, that was one of the key reasons why you did see Slimmy actually come out for, for C9 in the end. So that is certainly one team that he was kind of you know, toying with. Uh, we also did see him standing in for TSM, I believe during one of the I by Power Cups that have been recently, uh, where he might have been the fifth for that team before they picked up Twist. And, and now, of course, Kadian filling in for them at E-League. So that was another team he was kind of associated with uh, during his brief period being cut from, from Team Liquid. Um, so trying to think about what he could do next, I think you kind of have to start with teams like that. Uh, but you also have to kind of figure out, is he going to be a player still, like an in-game leader or a supportive rifler? Uh, or is he going to wind up being a coach, which is something that a lot of people, including myself, have felt that Adren could be quite good at. Uh, and there certainly is a need for coaches in the North American scene. There's no doubt about that. Uh, starting with him as a player, he obviously had a huge run at the MLG Columbus qualifiers and the MLG Columbus main event. He was putting up great numbers at that event, those two events. And kind of the, the key reasons for that was one, probably no pressure on him as you know, he knew he was already on his way out, basically, uh, when he was playing at these different events associated with MLG Columbus. Uh, he also wasn't having to worry about in-game leading, so that weight was taken off of his shoulders because Hiko was the primary shot caller uh, throughout those two events. And Adrian was just kind of a supportive voice. Yeah, pitched in ideas, but he didn't have to have the final say. And so, you know, that pressure wasn't really on him. Uh, and so when, when you kind of combine all that together, uh, it gave him a great mentality, I'm sure, to just focus on, you know, his fragging and performing. And when he was able to do that, 
uh, he did great. Now, they decided to shift Edrin back into a primary in-game leader role with his latest stints with Team Liquid, and you saw his, his fragging capabilities once again go down. So there seems to be a relationship there between uh, him being able to in-game lead and perform uh, as a fragger at the same time. Like, it just doesn't seem to work out. So that is something that you have to think about going forward. If he is, in fact, going to remain as a player, and if he wants to have any value as a fragger, then being able to, to do that in in-game leading doesn't seem to be working out. So you got to pick one or the other. Either you have to pick up a Dren as a player, as an in-game leader, knowing that he's probably not going to be able to produce on a regular, consistent basis when he's having to focus on leading the team. Then you have to assess whether or not you even like him as an in-game leader. You know, is he actually effective as that, or would he be more effective as a coach when it comes to helping with tactics? And, and things of that nature. You know, these are all the things you have to weigh. Or do you just pick him up as a support rifle and understand that he's probably going to be okay, but he's not going to be your star player, but maybe he can, he can just be a smart, supportive player, help you in late-round situations, help set other people up, help give you ideas, if you already have a primary caller, which seems to be where he's been at his best. Uh, so that's one thing to consider. But what teams could he even go to in, that, in one of those capacities? It's hard to know because I feel like he's not going to find himself on a top North American team at this point in time if he does go the player route because it seems like Cloud9 are, are already set up and locked in. Maybe things don't work out with Slimmy and he comes in as, as an in-game leader. Uh, they wanted to do that in the past, so I guess that could be an option. But with C9 actually looking quite sharp lately, if they can continue to stay at that level, then they probably just stick with Slimmy, right? Uh, unless things don't go so well for them at some of their you know recent events coming up, in which case maybe they would consider making another change. I'm not really sure. Uh, CLG seems like things are up in the air over there. Uh, you know they don't have a fifth. They're using Peter right now, so I don't know if a drink could be in the running as a player for that team. That's kind of a support rifler. Uh, which is kind of what he would be replacing since Fugly did kind of play a supportive role in many cases for CLG. Though there were also times where Fugly was kind of a secondary entry. So they were rotating roles a lot over on CLG. So I don't know if they could find a way to find a way with the roles to where Adrin could actually fit in and be a contributor there as a player. So you have to consider that as an option, though I'm not sure if that's really that likely. Uh, as far as when you're looking at other top North American teams, he just left Liquid, so that's obviously not happening. Happening. Optics seem pretty good where they're at. They're progressing well. They seem to have everything uh, really solidified. Their roles are great. They're getting good performances out of most of their players. So definitely don't see him really looking over there. Obviously, Energy has already made their changes. So unless something doesn't work out there, then that's probably not going to be an option as well. Uh, TSM is using Kading as a stand-in, but you would assume that Twist is going to come back because uh, he's been playing well with that team, by the way, when you saw him at the minor and all their online play. So you don't think that there would really be any changes there also so uh, I think I've kind of named most of the teams uh, that you would think about as being kind of the top of the North American region I don't think I missed one uh, let me just think about this really quick if there's one that maybe I I kind of uh, passed up on um, I don't know if selfless would somehow be an option for for him uh, or Splice, I, I don't know. Like I haven't really put too much thought on those particular lineups. But let's stop thinking about him as a player. Let's start thinking about him as a coach. Could he find himself as a coach on, on one of these teams that I've mentioned? Well, I have to start with Cloud9 because I don't know that Urikanji is going to be able to stay with Cloud9 much longer. Uh, it is well known now to most people in the CSGO scene that he just recently graduated from dental school, so he is a doctor now. He could go practice dentistry whenever he so chooses, uh, whether or not he wants to start his own practice or whether he wants to you know, just work for whoever. Uh, and that's obviously the, the ability for him to have a very lucrative career in an area outside of esports, you know, doing that line of work. And obviously he's committed a lot of time to that. It's a lot of schooling to go through to, to, to reach that level, to become a doctor in dentistry. Uh, so I would assume that eventually he's going to go that route. If that happens, then either an option opens up for Adrin to be the coach of that team, which they were interested in in the past, or, I don't know, maybe you see Slimmy become a coach and Adrin become a player. Either way, there are ways that Adrin could fit into Cloud9, uh, and I think that would be one of the likely options for him if, in fact, Urakanji, uh, you know, at some point in the near future decides to go ahead and move on from esports. Um, I know Optic is looking for a coach, so I don't know if that would be an option. Uh, I feel like probably not because I feel when I listen to some interviews with Daps and when you think about the situation that happened when those two guys played together on Liquid back at the end of 2014, uh, maybe the very beginning of 2015 near X Games Aspen times, um, 
you obviously saw a scenario where, you know, Dats was removed from Liquid and there seemed to be these differences in mentality about how to approach the game between Dats and Adrin. And I remember, you know, there always being this talk about Adrin having to help Dats a lot and Dats not feeling like that was necessarily true, that he was actually fine. Uh, and, and I don't know if there's just any type of bad blood there between the players of Optic and Adrin. I, I actually don't know. I don't have that information. So there is a potential that either personality clashes or differences in mentality or, you know, skeletons of the past would get in the way of Adrin being the candidate to coach Optic. But that if Optic are in need of a coach and Adrin's sitting out there as a free agent, that could be a possibility. I could see that happening. Obviously, Liquid have Peacemaker now, so there's no way back into Liquid for Adren. Uh, and then Peta seems like a good, great coach for CLG. I know he's playing right now, but eventually you would think that they get a fifth in there and he just remains as the coach for the team. And outside of that, it seems like all the other lineups you would think of in the North American scene pretty much have their uh, their their tactical base is set up either through their in-game leader or a coach already. So I don't really see him with with any other team as, as a coach, to be honest, in the NAC. And I think those are probably some of his best bets as everyone else seems set up. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea of what might happen with Adrin's future. Maybe I delved into that topic a bit longer than expected, but figured out I would, you know, do a little section there about him going forward. Now let's talk about Team Liquid. Uh, so first of all, let's address Simple coming into the team. So obviously Simple uh, has done well with Liquid in the past, a top four finish in MLG Columbus. He obviously is a phenomenally talented player. He's very versatile. Uh, he has big playmaking potential, but he has his shortcomings. You know, obviously he's always been cited as having these attitude issues, not getting along with teammates, which is why he kind of stepped away from the, the Team Liquid starting lineup in the first place, as well as how he got removed from Flipside Tactics. I'm sure there's other instances as well of people not wanting to play with Simple just because he's so hard to deal with, and that's obviously a huge problem. Granted, you don't have to be the nicest guy in the world. Not everyone has to get along, but you, you have to kind of meet this minimum threshold of, of being able to be played with for you to be able to stick on a team for a long enough time to actually establish your career. And that seems to be something that is still a huge issue with him, that he still needs to mature in that area to if he's ever going to find himself on uh, a more permanent team that he can actually you know build his legacy with going forward. Also, I would say that his play style can be quite risky. Um, so even though he has big playmaking potential and he's really skilled, there have been instances where he has overextended, he has uh, gone too far, and he's actually put his team in, in terrible situations when he's done that, when he misses a shot or he doesn't quite hit the play he wants. So uh, there is that, that, that situation where as a player he needs to just gain more experience when his decision making on risk assessment and, and, and you know return an investment on uh, the, the maneuvers that he makes. And, and that's something that is just going to have to come with time and with maturity and with you know more games being played and just kind of figuring out his limitations and so those are some things to consider um, however with him coming in temporarily um, I guess you can't really focus too much on him or Team Liquid or, or the future of those two parties together because apparently he's just coming in for these two events so it'll just be about what Simple can do to help Liquid maybe still get some results out of these next two events even though they don't have their full five established uh, and this has brought up a debate about who should you let op, uh, Simple or Kusta, in these next two events. And again, you know, it's all about what you're thinking about doing long term for Liquid or whether or not you're more focused on the short term on just getting results of these two events. Um, so far, we've only seen Simple and Kusta play together on Team Liquid at DreamHack Malmu, which is where they lost, I believe, 16 13, the Mouse Sports on Dust 2. And then I think they lost, what, a double overtime game against Tyloo on Cobblestone. Um, and so that was the only two matches that they had played together in a LAN environment. I think maybe they had played a little bit together online, but not really sure. We, we've openly heard Simple not really care for Kusta very much because he wants to op over Kusta. And we obviously saw that clash come together at Malmu where it was, in fact, Kusta who opt in the first map on Mouse Sports and Dust 2. And he actually didn't do badly. I thought he did pretty okay there obviously they lost he didn't have a huge impact but his numbers were okay uh, and then on cobblestone the next map the next day kusta was had the op taken from him it was given the simple uh and so you felt like kusta kind of got hamstrung a little bit there didn't really perform well at all uh and then simple took on the op and he had his problems in that match as well and they wound up losing that game so there's definitely you know pros and cons to both sides of this you know it really comes down to do you want to try to get the maximum yield out of the entire lineup or 
do you simply want to set up simple w with a gun where he can have a huge impact potentially? Um, and that's kind of the, the thing you have to do because if you take the op away from Kusta, he's probably not going to perform very well. You know, that's just, it's not his main role. It's not his main gun. It's not what he practices and drills on a regular basis. So you're taking away from him. And then what's simple, simple can still have a huge impact as a rifler. Yes, he can have more of an impact with an op. But if, if you really want your team having a chance to fire on all cylinders, so to speak, and have everyone perform at a pretty good level, then you you keep Kusta with the op, you let simple rifle. Because like this, maybe this is your baseline play here, right? If you let Kusta op and you let simple rifle. But maybe, you know, it comes down a little bit if you take the, the op away from Kusta because you're, you're limiting him. But maybe if you give simple the op, you're, you're elevating your, your full potential. But there, there's some level in between that you're probably going to hit depending on the decision that you make. So it's just about do you want to like guarantee that you're here or do you want to try to get up here and potentially risk being way down here? You know, I, I don't really know how else to phrase it. That might have been a bad way to describe it. Because um, here's the thing. Simple, again, can make big plays with the op, can put up a lot of numbers, could help your team get better results. In fact, with some of the issues that Liquid have had, he can maybe help you break through a moment where you're beginning to fade and drop off and risk not being able to win the game. His big plays can bring you back up. It can find you openings. It can give you more options on the terror side. But it is certainly true, as I mentioned earlier, that he can overextend and he can cause you problems. The biggest example of this was that cobblestone game against Ty Lu at DreamHack Malmu where we saw moments in regulation where he was making these crazy risky plays that didn't pan out, you know, on their terror side. He would be on the long B platform, such a powerful position to have as an opera on cobblestone to hold off a retake. But he jumped down and tried to take these crazy fights in the site, and he was losing a lot of those. And it was a contributing factor to why like we were losing some rounds in regulation on their terror side. And over time, I saw moments on the terror side where he was heavily just trying to make these solo plays on the A side of the map, just pushing into the site by himself, not on the same page as his team, and he would die and he just puts his team in an instant four versus five. So setting his team up for failure when he's not hitting his shots, he's not making the big plays. So he can he can be a burden on your team when he takes some of these, you know, high risk plays that don't actually pan out. Uh, whereas Kusta, maybe he's not aggressive enough. A lot of people fault him for not being willing to take duels with other oppers, being more passive, being more of a an angle holding type of opera, particularly on the CT side. People fault him for maybe his rotations not being on point on the CT side sometimes. But he seems to be one that isn't going to take the incredibly risky plays. He's going to be the one that sets himself up to hit those easier shots 9 out of 10 times or 8 out of 10 times or what have you, just holding an angle. Uh, and he's just more of a known value. Like, you you know what I mean? So it's one of those things where maybe that is the best option then. And I think Liquid, one of the guys over there on their staff, already kind of announced that Simple would be rifling and Kusta would be opping. So I guess the debate is settled. We know what's going to happen, but people will argue whether or not that was the best decision. Um, and again, the other thing you have to add into all this is this supposed rumor that perhaps JDM is coming to Team Liquid and Kusa's going to be traded to CLG or Kusa's just dropped from the roster. And so this whole thing where Adrenaline was dropped and a mystery rifler has come in is not the only change that Liquid is going to make, that perhaps maybe Kusa is on his way out and other opera is coming in. Um, and so if that's going to happen anyway, then, you know, maybe it doesn't matter, you know, if Kusa opts because he, maybe he's going to be leaving no matter what. Um, and so... If you just really want to go for the short-term results, maybe you do just give Simple the op. And maybe there's going to be a balance between the two. Maybe you do see instances where Simple just takes the op on T side and try to open things up for his team while Koos is more of a CT side opper. Uh, I don't know how this is going to work. The team environment's going to be shit. Like, there, there's no doubt about that. We've already just seen people openly commenting on each other on social media and on streams. Simple talk about not liking Kusta and some of his other teammates. Teammates coming out on Twitter from Liquid talking about how difficult it is to play with Simple, how they don't enjoy it. So the team environment's going to be shit no matter what. So it's just about whether or not these guys could actually perform together, put that stuff aside, try to still get some wins out of it. And then, you know, get the lineup actually together that you're going to have going forward afterwards and focus on that uh, when the time is right. I'll briefly mention, by the way, if this rumor is true about JDM coming to Team Liquid, that would be a great move because JDM is one of the best operas in the North American region. He might, in fact, be the best. I know Skadoodle's starting to rise back up again, but while he was slumping, JDM was considered the best op. Yeah, he might be weak on his rifles in many people's opinion, but his op is still strong. He's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best operas in the world, particularly towards the last six or so months of 2015. He was really looking sharp, so I think that would actually be a good move. You're starting to put together, uh, you know, kind of a, a dream team scenario when you're 
you're having guys like JDM Hiko on the same team, you know, especially if you can get Nitro back up to form, you know, it, with the Elige Nitro entry duo combo that has been proven in the past to be excellent, you're starting to really put together something there. I probably will just hold off on commenting any more on that because it is just a rumor. If, in fact, an announcement comes out down the road, I'll probably make another Team Liquid video about their mystery rifler and this whole situation ADM if it does come to fruition. So, last but not least, who could be the rifler? Who is the mystery man for Team Liquid? Um, and uh, if you're going to stick within the North American region, riflers, that would make sense if you're just going to, you know, keep Elysia Nitro as the entry duo, keep your opera, keep Hiko as kind of an aggressive peripheral role player because he seems to not be the hardcore lurker anymore. It seems like he is, uh, you know, being more active, which has helped Liquid out a lot in some cases, you know, watching Hiko entry the A-bomb site from door on cash or watching him up get mid-control on cash. These are evolutions in Hiko's play that I feel have you know, serve the team well. And his form is coming back in the shape. He's looking like Vintage Hiko a lot of the time. And this has been big for Liquid, and it'll be big for Liquid going forward if they want to get successful. They need Hiko to keep doing that. So if you're just going to plug in another player to kind of fill a Dren's role as more of a supportive peripheral role player, um, then guys that come to mind would be Cutler from CLG. I think he's a severely underrated player in the North American scene. He's been the lurker for a while now for CLG, but he's also versatile. Could be more aggressive if need be. Um, pretty consistent rifler. Um, some people call him the North American Crims. I think that's not a bad comparison. Um, obviously not as accomplished as Crims, but kind of can play a similar role on a team and is, like I said, fairly consistent. So that wouldn't be a bad option if somehow they could get him. I know Tarek has been mentioned. Uh, he was serving a peripheral role on CLG as well for a while, kind of took that over from Fugly uh, at different periods of time throughout CLG's play over the last few months, and he is a pretty skilled rifle, so I, I could see that working as well. Um, if you're going to stick in the NA scene, I don't think you're going to touch anybody from Cloud9 or Optic, in my opinion. Those people seem pretty firmly set in stone. I mean, obviously, youngsters like Sick and Twist over at TSM could be attractive candidates for riflers for a team like this, though... Uh, they, they're probably firmly in place over on TSM, if I had to imagine. Uh, Uber's a free agent out there, but I'm not quite sure he would really fill the role that Liquid would need. Um, so I don't think that he really fits in for, for the type of role that he's going to play. Uh, and outside of that, no other free agents really come to mind. Unless they, there could be some kind of crazy move uh, where they're able to pick up like JKS from Renegades or something like that who can play that passive rifle role. That would be sick if, if there was a way that could happen. Obviously, there's no language barrier issues there, and I'm not really sure what's going on with the Renegades, but JKS could be a really good candidate for a position like that. Um, so I, I just kind of randomly threw that one in there. That's probably very unlikely. Other than that, there's always the option of, you know, finding a European player, and there's so many European options out there that I don't even really want to spend too much time talking about it because it would take forever. I know one name that's been thrown around is Pimp from SK, which maybe people would, would consider SK maybe being on the rocks a bit with all this drama about the LG SK thing. Maybe SK is looking to drop the team, and if that happens, maybe players do kind of go their separate ways. So maybe Pimp could be an option for this team as well as a rifler. And there, there's so many other European names, like I said, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. And to end this video, the last point I want to address is what other things do Liquid need to focus on going forward if they are to kind of dig themselves out of the hole that they're in and become a top team again? Uh, first of all, obviously getting their roster situated is a big thing, but what are some other issues that uh, need to be sorted out? So first of all, they're having trouble closing games. They're, I don't know if it's particular players succumbing to the pressure, feeling the need that they're, they're forced to make plays to try to end the game, and so they're making rash decisions, they're not thinking clearly, or if the pressure just gets to them and they begin to like tilt and collapse. I'm not sure if that's the case, if just certain individuals are having that problem. I'm not sure if it's a team-wide mentality problem, but it started out as them being an underdog team, putting themselves in situations to upset the, the favorite, and then not being able to close. Obviously against Luminosity at Columbus twice, against Nip uh, at the SL Season 3 Finals, but now it's started to be where they're in positions where they're the favorite, and they still struggle to close the game. This happened online uh, against Echo Fox on Dust2, I believe, in the ECS. I think it also happened to them against Cloud9 in ECS on Dust2, though you could argue who was actually the favorite there. But it happened uh, where they were in a, in a position to beat C9. They had done so on LAN at the ESL Season 3 Finals not so long ago. Um, so, the, And this was before E-League, by the way, this whole Cloud9 ECS situation. Um, failed there, and then it happened to them against Renegades at E-League. 
So this is a persistent problem. And I'm not sure if you, you can call it choking, you can call it whatever you want. You can call it just them making mistakes that they need to fix and they're, they're almost there. But yeah, this obviously is something that has to, to be sorted out. So that, that's kind of one problem that they need to look at going forward. Um, another thing I think they need to look at going forward, uh, again, I'm, I've already addressed like roster situations. That's obviously something that has to be sorted out, so I won't bring that up. But another thing is Nitro, make him great again, please. Like, he was so good in 2015. People were even saying he was the best North American player overall. He had certainly done a lot to earn that title. He was putting up big numbers at the end of 2015 for Team Liquid. He was really helping them get in situations to win, and in fact, some cases, helping them really just close and win games. Um, in 2016, when Simple came on board, seems like he really fell off. I'm not sure if it was because Simple somehow affected him. I have no idea. But Simple, even when he's exited the team, and they've had apparently people that get along better, he still hasn't really quite hit the mark. I mean, he's had some mats where he's looked good. Don't get me wrong. It hasn't all been doom and gloom uh, for, for Nitro here. But at the same time, I still feel like he's not quite... Uh, where he used to be. Uh, he's just not necessarily putting up the same numbers that you, you would hope for on a team that's supposed to be prided on their firepower, Nitro being a big part of that. I mean, when you look at his match history, he certainly had his struggles, you know, at different moments uh, in E-League, though he did have some maps in, in, where he did play well. You know, online, he's looked pretty good. But again, there's just been moments where I feel like he just hasn't been as solid as he used to be. He seems kind of 50-50, so to speak, where he'll have big mats, but he also has bad ones. So I feel like he needs to get to a more consistent level where he's, you know, 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10, instead of just 5 out of 10, where he's having a huge impact. Especially since Elise has actually stepped up his game, I feel like. I feel like Elise is actually getting more consistent. He was kind of in the position Nitro is now, uh you know, months ago, you know, he was the guy that was kind of hit or miss, kind of 50-50, big games where you can drop 30 kills, but then games where he looked really quiet, whereas I feel like now he's really starting to get to a, a better level where you see, you see him having an impact more and more often. Uh, so if Nitro can catch back up to speed and then you have a leech continuing to grow, this could become the best entry duo again in, in the North American region, and which would be a powerful tool for Liquid going forward. So I'll just say that. I think Nitro is a great player. I just hope that, you know, he, whatever you know, mental block is in his way, or I don't know if it's just the, the fact that there's so much instability at Liquid right now with all these changes that that's affecting him. I mean, his role has always stayed the same. Even when other people's roles have changed over the course of all these roster moves, he's always pretty much stayed in the same boat. So I don't think that's the problem. I'm not sure what it is, and I've actually talked to him about it, and he is aware of this, by the way. You know, I'd make, like, a little snarky comment about, you know, make Nitro great again. Like, he's seen my stuff on social media. We, we've spoken at E-League and stuff, uh, and he says, I hope it's now. You know, like, I'm working on it. I see him DMing. I see him putting in the work. It's not a lack of effort that's stopping Nitro. Uh, hopefully, he'll get it sorted out, though, because he should be a great player for this team. Uh, and so that's another thing to kind of think about going forward. Um... Other than that, it's also about sorting out the leadership. I mean, Adren's out the door, so that in-game leader's gone. I assume that Peacemaker will just take over as the shot caller of the team, as he was for quite a while on Tempo Storm and Games Academy. Um, so I assume that will eventually happen, but it's going to take time for him to figure out the roster and put his system in place. And that needs to work out. Like it needs to, it needs to be proven that Peacemaker is not just like a one-trick pony. That it wasn't that he was only capable of working with the Brazilians, and and you know, you know, and it wasn't, you know. There's always this debate, but because Bolts took over the in-game leadership over there, who really was it calling all the shots that mattered the most? Uh, so this is a perfect chance for Peacemaker to really firmly establish himself as a great coach. People already think he's a good coach from what he did with Tempo Storm and how they played. But for him to be truly great, for him to be maybe regarded as one of the best coaches in CSGO, this is going to be a big project for him to see if he can put the pieces together. And I think he's capable of it. He seems like a smart guy, uh, but it's just about being in a whole different environment with a whole new group of players uh, and trying to sort everything out. And so that'll be another thing for Liquid to tackle going forward. So I think I'll just leave it at that. This video is already drug on kind of long, but just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the announcements that Liquid made uh, and address some of the, the different, you know, variables in play with all of that so if you enjoyed it please follow and subscribe for more content until next time have a good one